Hi, this is your Supreme Bharatiya and welcome to T3M or topic of this month. The topic of this month is data and today we have with us once again Dave Birmingham, Director of Customer Success at Science Technology. Dave, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me again. I'm glad to, to be here talking with you today. Yeah, it's my pleasure to host you again. And today, uh, when we look at, you know, of course, data is a, is a, is a big, you know, uh, we can talk about some aspect, but what we are going to talk about today specifically is high availability in the cloud. How would you define high availability or disaster recovery in the cloud native world? Because sometimes when we look at cloud, it does take care of a lot of things. Availability is something they, they, they offer. Of course, recovery from any failure is also the offer. So sometimes people folks that cloud is a magical place and you don't really need. So I want to understand uh, high availability disaster recovery in the cloud native world. First off, you know, high availability and disaster recovery are key aspects of system management that, you know, aim to ensure that your services are not disrupted and that data is not lost in the event of a problem. In the cloud native world, HA is typically achieved through redundancy and failover mechanisms with services running on multiple instances across different zones and different regions in the cloud. Uh, disaster recovery, on the other hand, can involve things such as backing up systems and data and, and generally having a plan in place to restore systems from those backups in the event of a disaster, such as a system-wide outage. Now, running in the cloud, you mentioned, you know, it's a magical place. And that that is kind of a... Um, you know, some people might think that, right? So, oh, I'm moving to the cloud. I don't. I no longer have to worry about high availability disaster recovery. And of course, you know, cloud vendors do provide several tools and mechanisms to help uh, and facilitate high availability and disaster recovery. But it's really ultimately up to the customer to properly utilize these in their architecture. And and you know. The cloud is not immune to outages and, and errors and, and other issues. We've seen, you know, major outages, minor outages. You know, it's just it's just as susceptible to outages as your own data center. So, you know, you, therefore you must still have a robust high availability, high availability and disaster recovery plan in place to ensure uninterrupted service and data protection. As we talked about cloud, you know, a lot of times, depending on who you talk to, when we look at cloud, uh, a lot of times think, folks think that since everything is running in the cloud, you really don't have to worry about high availability or disaster recovery. Folks also feel that practices like chaos in ring and, and resiliency and you know redundancy that kind of eliminates the the need of having you know any hadr either approach or solution but the fact is that these two words have to coexist one is more about practices and culture and other is more about actual solutions and services uh, whatever you want to call them so i do want to talk a bit about these two things as well yeah and that is a common misconception i hear all the time you know people moving to the cloud and you know well, we don't need to have uh you know we don't need to do anything in terms of backups or you know doing anything to ensure resiliency and you know they're really two different things you know at silos we we help in, in both areas but let's take a look at the you know the resiliency or i think of the you know the high availability aspect so you know being able to keep your data in sync in a synchronous fashion so no data loss across multiple cloud zones availability zones or, or you know every cloud vendor has a different name for it but getting it from one data center to another and having a, a duplicate copy in real time is absolutely what you need to do for high availability um, that's for the data protection and then of course the application monitoring failover that ensures that you survive from you know minor blips or user error or something like that so you can have you know, the four nines of availability, very minimal downtime, you know, five minutes or less a month of downtime. But that's, if you implement that, that's great. You should absolutely do that. But that does not eliminate the need for having a robust 
backup strategy and a disaster recovery strategy. You may lose the entire region, so it doesn't matter that you have your data copied synchronously between availability zones in that region. That entire region could go offline. You know, it could be natural disaster, it could be human error, whatever. There's, and we've seen that happen. So you need to have that disaster recovery plan for that major type outages, but maybe even more likely, you you know, you hear in the news of people, uh, you know, have these people coming in and they're they're holding your data hostage. They're encrypting all your data and they want you to send them, you know, a million dollars in, in Bitcoin and, you know, they're going to give you the key to unencrypt your data. Now, either you you pay the, you know, you send them the, the, the Bitcoin or you hope that you have an archive copy that is off-site, inaccessible, something that the the bad actors have not gotten access to to encrypt that as well. So you still need to have that fail-safe uh, or that airbag in place for those those situations you just can't expect to happen. So that's no different than on-prem in the cloud. It's the same. The cloud just gives you some additional tools. You know, a lot of the cloud vendors have back up um, and so that you know you can take images of your systems and, and replicate them you know and incrementally you know maybe with a five minute RT, uh, RPO or 15 minute RPO or thereabouts and that's great you know you should absolutely take advantage of those um, functionalities uh, at SIOS we can do real-time asynchronous replication between regions that gives you even a lower uh, RPO but that's you know you need to take advantage of those tools and of course the the infrastructure in place in the cloud where where else do you have the ability to have you know 20 or more data centers spread across the entire world so you you know how you design your disaster recovery plan has just become a whole lot easier in terms of the infrastructure you don't need to build out you know data centers just to host your disaster recovery cloud vendors already done that for you when we look at not only just Sios's ecosystem, but in general, there are companies who are in different stages of their cloud native or digital transformation journey. A lot of companies, of course, they were born in the cloud era, but a lot of companies which are have been around for a while, uh, which means they do have a lot of experience of HNDR in on-prem, but as they migrate, they move to the cloud. Uh, of course, they have to look at it from the lens of cloud. So talk a bit about how is HADR different in cloud as compared to on-prem and how do you folks uh, enable these users to kind of uh, seamlessly uh, continue their journey? High availability and disaster recovery is different in the cloud compared to on-prem uh, for a few reasons. So first, the cloud platforms, like I, I was mentioning earlier, they provide native tools and services for HA and, and DR, such as automated backups and you know uh, replication of the storage on the back end, plus the easy setup of redundant instances with that cross-region replication. So that can make HA and DR easier to implement in the cloud compared to on-prem because all those tools and utilities and infrastructure are already in place. Well, however, with the cloud, um, there's a greater emphasis on automation and infrastructure as code, which can change how your high availability and disaster recovery strategies are designed and implemented. Uh, and then you have to think about the shared responsibility model of the cloud, which means that you know while the cloud provider takes care of certain aspects of availability like you know hardware redundancy and network redundancy storage redundancy um, the customer is responsible for everything else like the application layer and making sure that your data is highly available and that's you know at silos that's what we do we have the tools in the, uh, the, the clustering software with LifeKeeper that's going to monitor the applications here and you know take recovery actions and then DataKeeper continuously replicating it with you know synchronous block level replication or a, you know between zones or asynchronous between regions and then even enabling hybrid cloud models so people 
you know, either migrating to the cloud, looking for a way to get their data into the cloud, or just running in a hybrid model on a regular basis with maybe the cloud being their disaster recovery center instead of managing their own. You know, they still have their own data center, but they're using the cloud as their as their DR site. So at Cyos, we can help facilitate that with you know our HA and disaster recovery solutions. When we're talking about how different HADR is in cloud as compared to on-prem, do you also see or your customers, users, see some unique challenges that they face when it comes to HADR in the cloud, once again, vis-a-vis on-prem? You know, often people are new to the cloud. So there are some nuances um, depending upon the cloud. There's different, you know, way networks, virtual networks are configured that, you know, uh, it's going to be a learning curve. So one of the challenges is just really understanding and properly using all the, you know, all the high availability and disaster recovery tools and just the infrastructure tools in general provided by the cloud platforms. So each, you know, each cloud vendor has its own unique set of tools and services. And, you know, that can be a learning curve. And, you know, if you're doing multi-cloud, then that's, you know, two times because, you, you you know, every every cloud vendor is going to have different tools and different ways to do things. Another issue, um, you know, the unique challenges with the cloud is just knowing, you know, where is where is my data? You know, data sovereignty and compliance, um, that's that's something that everyone needs to be concerned about. And some, you know, some regions have very specific laws. Uh, regarding where your data can be stored and transferred. And so that will certainly affect how um, you implement high availability and disaster recovery in the cloud. And then, you know, finally, costs can be a concern. So, um, you know, cloud providers, again, offer some utilities for high availability and disaster recovery, but everything comes with a price tag and it's usually, you know, a consumption-based model. So, Often, you know, using them is going to incur additional charges. You know, getting a, a good estimate and and managing that on an ongoing basis can be a challenge with you know, uh, with creep. You know, things you know being implemented in the cloud, and and all of a sudden your your bill, kind of like my cable bill, seems to go up a couple dollars every month. And so managing that. Is, is certainly a challenge. Uh, since you, you mentioned uh, cost, I also want to talk a bit about uh, the egress fee that is associated when you migrate or move data and organizations, they do have to move data for so many different reasons. Uh, how does kind of SIOS help organizations with that? So moving data at SIOS is with our product DataKeeper and DataKeeper runs on Windows and Linux and it does real time block level replication <clears throat> from you know one server to another or from one to multiple from on-prem into the cloud or between uh, instances in different availability zones in the same region or even between regions uh, with our asynchronous replication. And so DataKeeper will be obviously moving data when we're talking about from region to region or zone to zone, there's going to be egress data costs associated with that. So SIOS uh, helps manage that by uh, in, in allowing you to enable data compression before the data leaves the region or the, the you know the availability zone. We'll compress it and then decompress it once it's received. So that can save uh, you know save on your egress data cost depending upon the data type. I and mean, we have seen you know three to one, four to one, five to one compression ratios. And so that obviously will have a direct impact on your data egress costs. What advice do you have for customers so that they can build great HA strategy for cloud? I'd say first you have to understand your needs. So not not every application or service may require the same level of availability. So all this comes down into your you know your business continuity plan. You need to categorize your applications, which one needs real-time replication, which one is, you know, maybe backup, maybe, you know, 15-minute RTO, RPO. You have to define what that is. So prioritize your according to your business needs. It's not a one-size-fits-all model. So that's number one. Um, number two is 
Design for failure. So you have to assume that every component can fail. And so you must design your architecture in a way that such failures have minimal at impact on the overall service availability. I mean, we've seen, I remember a large outage that you know, Microsoft had with, um, I think it was Azure Active Directory, one offline in one region. And that had such a wide impact across many of their services that they were offering. So you have to look very closely at you know, at the end of the at the end of the line, you have this service that someone's consuming, but there are so many components along that chain that need to be available in order for that end service to function. So you need to definitely design for failure for each and every one of those components. Um, the third recommendation I would say is automate where possible. We talked about cloud automation and infrastructure as a code, but the automation can significantly reduce the risk of human error and increase the efficiency and speed up your recovery time. So, you know, one of the things you could do for the, you know, the high availability is making sure that you have your cl the clustering tools in place, like, you know, like the Cyrus LifeKeeper that will continuously monitor your applications and automatically take the recovery action when needed. Or even if it's not automatic, if you're doing disaster recovery and you want to push the button, being able to recover all your applications with one single push is, is, is so much better than having to, you know, have you know, your engineer who you don't know at the time of a disaster, who's going to be available to implement all the steps in a long run book. If, if you have the, the step is push the button, that's so much better than you know having to go through a 20 page run book to recover an application and then finally you have to test so you could have all the best plans in place in the world and, and you think you've covered everything but if you haven't tested it and regularly test it then you're doing yourself a disservice so regular regular testing ensures that your plan works as expected and it will help you discover any potential issues so make sure you schedule your disaster recovery and your, your HA test on a regular basis. Dave, thank you so much for taking time out today and of course talk about HA in the cloud. Uh, thanks for all those insights. And as usual, I would love to chat with you again soon. Thank you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. See you next time. Thank you.